ready to dive into the mysterious world of a 1939 film set against the rugged backdrop of coastal England. Follow the journey of a young woman named Mary as she becomes entwined in a dangerous web at a remote and run by smugglers. Featuring classic Hollywood actor Charles Lawton, this movie introduces a cast of memorable characters, weaving a plot full of surprises. Behind the scenes, however, lie amusing, shocking, and poignant facts waiting to be uncovered. As you watch the video, keep an eye out for these fascinating tidbits. You might stumble upon lesser-known anecdotes that will capture your interest. Share your own special memories or experiences related to this cinematic gem in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. So grab your popcorn and get ready for a journey into this captivating world. There's plenty to discover, so keep watching. Few movies have left such a lasting impression on cinema as the 1939 thriller directed by Alfred Hitchcock. It's widely acknowledged that the movie, with its suspenseful narrative and memorable characters, has greatly influenced filmmakers over the years. The performances by the lead actors are often cited as particularly noteworthy as they have become iconic figures in the world of film. The movie's exploration of timeless themes such as human nature and morality continues to captivate audiences, while Hitchcock's skillful direction sets a standard for creating tension and excitement on screen. The impact of this film is undeniable as it continues to inspire and resonate with both filmmakers and viewers alike. In What Do You Earn Too, Willie Penhale became known for his role in a 1939 film where Charles Lawton portrayed a character closely aligned with Francis Davy from the novel. Their roles intertwined to shape the story against a historical backdrop. Fast forward to today, the real Jamaica Inn still stands proudly near the A30 in Bolvinter, Cornwall, England. This tangible link to the film's setting adds authenticity to the cinematic portrayal connecting the real and the real world. This link to history and the preservation of Jamaica Inn is a reminder of the film's lasting influence. The characters and the actual location create an interesting interplay between fiction and reality, letting audiences explore a world shaped in 1939 that still resonates today. Due to the original copyright holder's failure to renew the copyright, the 1939 movie fell into the public domain. Consequently, numerous copies flood the market, often poorly edited or of subpar quality, originating from multiple generations of duplicates. However, an exception is the Blu-ray version, maintaining a higher standard. Notably, Jamaica Inn marks the final film by director Alfred Hitchcock without his customary cameo appearance. A departure from this long-standing practice, the film stands out in Hitchcock's career for this particular omission. In retrospective interviews with Francois Truffaut, Hitchcock expressed irritation at Charles Lawton's initial request. Lawton, the lead actor, insisted on being filmed exclusively in close-ups during the early stages of shooting. This peculiar demand was linked to Lawton's uncertainty about his character's walking style. After 10 days, he claimed to have resolved it, attributing the walk to the rhythm of an old German waltz. These quirks and unique aspects contribute to the intrigue surrounding this Hitchcock film, making it a distinctive entry in the director's body of work. Hitchcock's annoyance and Lawton's idiosyncratic demands add layers of interest to the production, shedding light on the complexities of filmmaking. The setting portrayed in the film may give the impression that smugglers swiftly reach the coast to bring back contraband. However, the real Jamaica Inn is actually 17 miles from the nearest coastline, requiring a long trek for horses up cliff paths and over part of Bobman Moor. This film marks the first of three collaborations between Charles Lawton and Maureen O'Hara, with the others being the hunchback of Notre Dame, and this land is mine. Interestingly, the movie found its place in the 1978 book, The 50 Worst Films of All Time by Harry Maddow and Randy Lowell. In an interview with Francois Truffaut, Alfred Hitchcock expressed dissatisfaction with the movie's outcome, stating, although it became a box office hit, I'm still unhappy over it. Despite Hitchcock's discontent, the film managed to generate a profit of $37 million. Charles Lawton, cast as Squire Pangolin, played a pivotal role in the casting decision for Mary. Insisting on Maureen O'Hara for the role, Lawton's influence shaped the character dynamics in the film. However, Hitchcock's discontent extended beyond casting choices. The director was notably displeased with alterations made to the script. These sentiments were revealed in Charlotte Chandler's book, it's only a movie shedding light on Hitchcock's dissatisfaction with the creative deviations from his vision. The financial success of the film did not translate into creative satisfaction for Hitchcock. Despite its profitability and the strong cast, Hitchcock's discontent with the casting decisions and script changes lingered, showcasing the filmmaker's uncompromising vision and commitment to his craft. 
Maureen O'Hara landed her breakthrough role in a film that marked Alfred Hitchcock's departure from England to Hollywood. Hitchcock's next project, Rebecca, followed. During an interview, Hitchcock recounted a challenging moment with Charles Lawton, describing his struggle to achieve a particular close-up shot. Despite Lawton's difficulty, Hitchcock remembered him as a nice and charming man who endured much during filming. Set in Cornwall in 2019, the film showcased an impressive performance by Stephen Haggard, who skillfully portrayed the 17-year-old character, Willie Penhale, at the age of 28. This not only highlighted Haggard's acting skills, but also added depth to the story. What sets this film apart is the introduction of writer Joan Harrison, whose debut made a lasting impact on the production. Through her creative perspective, Jamaica in story gained a unique flavor, blending mystery and suspense against Cornwall's historical backdrop. As the plot unfolded, viewers were transported to a different time, with Cornwall's landscapes providing a perfect setting for the unfolding drama. The historical context brought authenticity to the narrative, immersing the audience in a world of mystery and suspense. The film's success lies not just in its engaging storyline, but also in the seamless integration of various elements. From Stephen Haggard's portrayal of Willie Penhale to Joan Harrison's storytelling, each piece came together to create a cinematic experience that resonated with audiences. In conclusion, the film, set in Wade 19 Cornwall, weaves a tale of mystery and suspense brought to life by Stephen Haggard's talents and Joan Harrison's debut brilliance. This unique blend of elements contributes to the film's lasting appeal, making it a timeless piece of cinematic history. Amidst the making of the film, there was quite a drama behind the scenes. A well-known actor, captivated by his young co-star, even considered adopting her. His wife dismissed it as a passing fancy, accusing the girl of taking advantage of her husband's kindness. This tension spilled over onto the set, with the wife openly expressing her dislike for the young actress. In return, the actress didn't hold back in her memoirs, revealing her own dislike for the wife. The actress, who had previously appeared in a lesser-known film, made her big debut in this one, marking the start of her Hollywood journey. Meanwhile, the director wasn't entirely satisfied with the script or the lead actor's performance. Nevertheless, he continued experimenting with his unique style, opting for minimal background music to create a dark and atmospheric tone. This collaboration with a cinematographer led to a distinct visual style that would influence future projects. The dynamics both on and off the screen during the making of this film reveal a mix of ambition, tensions, and creative decisions that shaped the final product. In the late 1930s, a renowned director collaborated with actors who had previously worked together on several projects. Their partnership led to a 1939 movie that later made its debut in the United States. The film marked the director's first adaptation of a novel by a well-known author. This adaptation was followed by two more films based on the author's works. The diverse telecast schedule in the U.S. contributed to introducing the movie to American audiences. Altogether, this collaboration, coupled with the adaptation of the author's novels and the varied U.S. telecast schedule, added depth to the movie's narrative. In the world of filmmaking, conflicts behind the scenes can sometimes overshadow the creative process. One particular project saw Alfred Hitchcock facing a tough situation between Charles Lawton and Lawton's partners, making it one of his most challenging directing experiences. Hitchcock described feeling more like a mediator than a director during this production as tensions ran high between the parties involved. The clash between Lawton and his associates put Hitchcock in a tricky spot where he had to juggle competing interests while trying to maintain control over the film's direction. This strained environment made it difficult for Hitchcock to focus on his creative vision as he found himself caught in the middle of interpersonal conflicts. Despite his efforts to assert his authority, Hitchcock's role as a referee overshadowed his role as a director. This struggle is evident in the final film, which reflects the compromises made during its tumultuous production. Hitchcock's candid acknowledgement of the challenges he faced sheds light on the complexities that can arise during filmmaking. In the end, the making of this film serves as a reminder of the difficulties inherent in collaborative projects, where creative ambitions often clash with external pressures. Hitchcock's experiences during this production offer valuable insights into the behind-the-scenes dynamics that can shape a film's outcome. Hidden behind the scenes of the 1939 movie Jamaica in lies a poignant and tragic truth. Despite its thrilling narrative, the production marked a distressing period for its leading lady Maureen O'Hara. Throughout filming, O'Hara endured the torment of an abusive marriage, a fact unbeknownst to many at the time. Behind her radiant on-screen presence, she grappled with personal anguish, masking her pain with professionalism. 
The turmoil she faced off screen casts a somber shadow over the movie's legacy, revealing the sacrifices made by artists in pursuit of their craft. Yet, despite her struggles, Ohara's performance in Jamaica Inn remains a testament to her resilience and dedication to her art.